Back in April 2019 I published my first radiant power circuit. I experimented with several variations of that circuit, which taught me what is needed for the production of Nikola Tesla's radiant energy. Based on that knowledge, I have now made a new circuit. Hi, my name is Ivo and I'm doing research into Nikola Tesla's radiant energy, which is based on impulse electricity. The circuit is based on the previous circuit. I will explain it step by step so you can understand what each part does and I invite you to replicate this circuit, experiment with it and share your results so we can move forward faster together. I've made some changes in the circuit. For example, I am now close coupling L1 and L2 again and this makes the circuit much more efficient. It's very special. And this time I will also give L3 a negative DC offset. This is the new circuit. Inside the blue square is the high voltage switch made out of two series MOSFETs that switch simultaneously. I published this circuit in my radiant half bridge circuit for longitudinal waves video. So look it up. L2 is the primary coil and L3 is the secondary coil. Both coils are resonant, which makes this a dual resonant system. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get updates for my new videos. L2 is series resonant with C2 and L3 is parallel resonant with C3. L2 and L3 are in longitudinal magnetodielectric resonant mode which means their voltages and currents are 180 degrees out of phase. It is the second higher resonant frequency. L1 produces the negative voltage impulses. I explained how that works in my capacitor discharge resistor video, so look it up if you're interested. I've got a lot more on my channel, so. The negative voltage impulse of L1 flows into the series resonant L2 coil, which has low impedance. The negative impulses of L1 charge up C1, C2 and C5, giving the L2 primary coil a positive DC offset. The same negative impulses of L1 also charge up C6, and this gives the L3 secondary coil a negative DC offset. Please leave a like this helps out the video distribution. C3 is parallel resonant with L3, so C3 has no DC charge. I will now show you how the coils are stacked together. All the coils are Tesla bifiler plate coils, as described in his 512340 patent. L1 is close coupled to L2 and none of the three coils are flipped over. So they all rotate in the same direction. L3 is loose coupled to L2. L2 is the primary and L3 is the secondary coil. Since L1 isn't tuned by a capacitor, its resonant frequency is much higher than the L2 and L3 coils, which have tuning capacitors. This tunes them down in frequency. Thus, the impulses, which are resonant half waves that are produced by L1, are much faster, shorter in duration than the L2 and L3 waves. The series resonant L2 has a negative DC offset and the parallel resonant L3 has a positive DC offset. The DC offsets of L2 and L3 together charge up the coil capacitor, which uses the L2 and L3 coils as capacitor plates. That's why it's called a coil capacitor. Since the L2 and L3 coils are loose coupled, the capacity is rather low because the plates are farther away. 
So we need a really high voltage to charge up that capacitor made out of the coils. Now I'll show you the resonant AC waves of L2 and L3 on top of the DC offset. Here you see a graph of the voltage on the vertical axis and the time on the horizontal axis. The resonant sine waves of L2 and L3 are out of phase as they are tuned into LMD resonance, longitudinal resonance, the higher frequency. And as you can see, the AC voltages of L2 and L3 are distanced by a DC offset. The AC and DC together charge up the dielectric field between the L2 and L3 coil, which are the capacitor plates. The negative impulses created by L1 will now create a strong, rapid voltage change on the positive voltage maximum of series resonant L2. This impulse discharges the dielectric field of the L2, L3 coil capacitor. This sets up a longitudinal displacement current towards L3. The whole volume of ether starts moving longitudinal. And this then amplifies the resonant current of L3. But only if C3 is the right size. And that's got to be tuned. My dual MOSFET switch is able to handle 3,500 volts, which means I can produce impulses of 3,500 volts. Negative, that is. I also use these impulses to produce the DC offsets, but once the capacitors are charged, the impulses will flow through L2. The C1, 2, 5 and 6 capacitors are all charged up to high voltage DC. So they all need to be rated for at least 4 kilovolts. DC that is. I've drawn them as a single capacitors, but in reality I use multiple capacitors for each position. I use WIMA MKP10, 2 kilovolt DC rated capacitors, and I place them in series. And together they can handle 4 kV. However, when a cap is placed in series, it lowers the total capacitance and it also increases the resistance of the capacitors. It is very low, but it is increased. And for the impulses, it's important to be very low resistance path. The C1, L2, C2 circuit path needs to be low resistance for the impulses of L1 to move through L2 really fast. That's why I also place multiple capacitors in parallel as this lowers the total resistance of the caps. This is only needed for C1 and C2, which are the DC blocking capacitors of L2. The capacitor values. C4, C1, C5 have the biggest values of around one microfarad or bigger. C4 only needs to be at a hundred volt rating. And that is a WIMA FKP2 capacitor. I need to test the value of C6. C6 gives L3 a negative DC offset. So in theory, it could be small, like five nanofarad or even smaller, but it might also need to be one microfarad. For now, I will use 618 nanofarad. Again, four kilovolt rating. In the future, I might make some adjustments again. For example, in this presentation, I haven't included the L4 coil that I intend to use to create output. L4 would be close coupled to L3 and rectify to DC for uh, power measurements. This circuit is part of my open source research into Nikola Tesla's radiant energy.
no patents can or will be applied as it is all open source because this is for the benefit of the humankind. We need to progress. If you want to fund my research, you can do so by leaving a donation on my PayPal account, which is listed below. Thank you for watching. That's it for now. I'll see you later.